Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we're going to address a recent video by Nathan Oakley where he claims curve calculators have hijacked perspective and diffraction. Now not wanting to be left out, Quantum Eraser has come up with an observation of his own. Believe it or not, QE has figured out that sea level is the same at both ends of the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. Oh boy. Premeditated nitwittery. So, Gladys, Big Blue, you guys ready? <coughs> Great. Let's light this dumpster fire and have a little fun. <laughs> Let's listen to the last couple of minutes of Nathan and Randy's train wreck. Do you want to meet? Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. Right, excellent. So what we've now got here is the comparison with obstruction due to earth curve, geometric, perspective exclusive on the bottom and on the top we have a simple representation of the angle of which you are presented when looking at distance. So the top gives you a hidden value based on the bottom section, the hidden, being too small of an angle at this distance and the top section being the top part of the wider angle of a boat that you've seen alleged to go over the curve of the earth. Now, the hidden is hidden because of limitation of angle at the bottom. Now, that's a fact. Perspective rules, we know this. All they've done in the bottom image is intersected the angle which we are seeing things disappear at, the diffraction limit, uh, the horizon, and calling it a bulge. So it's geometric obstruction replacing limited angle. All you have on the top is reality, a side elevation of your angle of view and how much would be lost due to the diffraction limit or the... <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, yeah. I'll just say it once more. So at the top, you, do you remember when I asked you to draw out the other day on a show and I was like, you've done it already, but you hadn't. You'd done something similar, but not the same. But this is essentially what I wanted. Um, you've got the person. Admittedly, it's ridiculous to show that the guy on the, the left is, is tilting back when you make the comparison. Because for them to have this work, obviously, we know that they have to point your camera down. Well, when you point that out, that you know, the, the sagitta that it creates has you tipping yourself back on your ankles in order to do that. You know, the camera being pointed down, but that doesn't work because you're supposed to be on the top of the bulge. So the way they square that circle is to have you tipping back on your ankles, which is apparent when you put them both flat. But ultimately speaking, all they've done is replaced the angle and its, and its limitation when you put it against the deck and its hidden value versus a geometric obstruction that essentially would ignore anything to do with perspective because that dotted line that changes colour from visible to hidden is your quote unquote line of sight and we don't have laser beam single line of sight we have an angle to everything we see and that's accounted for in the top image because the bottom where it says hidden is the most limited angle to whatever that now slanted backwards ludicrous line is make sense it does you know i mean there's a few extra caveats that you can include especially looking over water you've got you've got waves that will uh, still also cut off extra additional they'll actually um increase the the height of the floor giving you an even narrower angle to be looking at well right once you've incorporated the angle so if you just take your mouse and put it under on the top image where it says horizon but on the bottom line on the bottom line there so if you if you say if you put the little you know there's a little pointer on your arrows if you put that just the one point at the top one above the line and say that that's a wave right as you slide it along to the right that's there is the point where that tiny little wave intersects the angle that you view in perspective and therefore that let's say it's comparative to the man 
a foot and a half, that's the point that you actually cause an obstruction to something that may not have been in the most limited of angle. I mean, obviously, this diagram has got this word hidden, which automatically begs the question that this thing is being hidden and is in the most limited of angle. But we'll just say for the sake of this argument that it is. You know, that particular thing is, let's say it's four feet at 17 miles, just for the sake of argument. And it would be hidden. It would be beyond the limit of your view. Something then, that the curve calculators do not account for, Nathan. Yeah, but all they've done is replaced the top image, which gives you an angle to anything you see in the distance. And then you can calculate whether or not that angle is too big, uh, sorry, too small to resolve the thing at the bottom where the angle's the most limited. And on the bottom, they've replaced all of that with, no, it's bulge. Forget all aspects of the angle and whether or not you can see something because it's too small to see. And things do get smaller in the distance, making them too small to see. But let's ignore that and just call that bulge. And so yeah, this is how they've replaced perspective with geometric curve. Let's change that into red. Mickwest omitted this. He's omitted the bulge from his curve calculator. Walter Bislin has still kept it. Oh well, it's a tricky detail, isn't it? That's what they're trying to prove. But I said this on one of the shows, didn't I? Ultimately, they can put anything they like in there because as soon as you start using the calculator, you're automatically begging the question, assuming the Earth's a sphere, and then just running through the motions of whatever they say, whatever bullshit maths makes what perspective does the Earth curve. I say that bars just like a tattoo gets under your skin. Yeah, don't he though? Curve calculators don't include perspective or angular size in their geometric calculations. You know that's true. They also don't take into account the color of the object being observed, what phase the moon is in, the gender of the observer, or what you had for lunch. Why? Because those things cannot be used to determine the hidden height of a distant object. They're irrelevant. All of that, including perspective and angular size, is irrelevant. Learn some geometry, please. This is what Nathan is good at. This is a red herring logical fallacy. He likes to just muddy the water with enough irrelevant nonsense to confuse everyone and then hope nobody notices. Well, we noticed. So let's figure out how a curve calculator works and what the Rayleigh criterion actually says about optical resolution, shall we? Now just so we don't make this too complicated for those who might be mathematically challenged, let me introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. Tootsie on the left is a Kardashian. You can tell she's a Kardashian by the shape of her butt. <laughs> Daisy on the right is a donkey. Actually, Gladys's cousin. Now, if the Earth were flat like the cartoon on the top and we put a brick wall between Tootsie and Daisy, Tootsie wouldn't see the bottom of Daisy because the wall is hiding Daisy's lower half. Are you with me, boys? On the other hand, if the Earth is... Well, you go ahead and say it, Nathan. Right. Spherical. The curve will do exactly what the brick wall did. Come on, guys. This isn't that hard. Perspective is an optical effect that makes distant objects appear smaller. They aren't smaller. They just appear to be. So we clone Daisy and we put a wall between Tootsie and our two Daisies. And as you see, Tootsie can see part of Daisy on the left. But Daisy on the right is blocked by the wall. This isn't perspective doing it, it's the wall. Let's take the wall away. Now Tootsie can see both daisies, and sure enough, the far daisy is going to look smaller, but that's all. She just looks smaller, she isn't smaller. This is perspective, fellas. And the earth isn't flat, you nitwits. This is a cartoon. Here's a curved depiction taken from Walter Bislin's calculator. Hidden height has nothing to do with perspective or diffraction. Hidden height is purely the geometry. Angular size will only tell you if the visible part of a distant object is large enough to be resolved by your eye. It doesn't change the way geometry works. If the bulge wasn't in the way, the entire object would be visible. 
if the object's height above the obstruction approaches the diffraction limit or the limit that your eye is able to resolve, you won't be able to see it. Now that actually ends up being around 11 feet at a distance of 10 miles. Not very much. If you can't see it, it's hidden. If you see part of it, it's partially hidden. Got it? This is the Rayleigh Criterion. It simply tells us how close together two points of light or say the top and the bottom of a building can be before you can no longer resolve them as two separate points of light. That occurs at that point when the objects become that close together and there are formulas for calculating that. Let's translate this into something that's a little easier to understand, shall we? If you have 20-20 vision, that means you can read the 8.8 .8 millimeter tall letters on the eye chart from a distance of about uh, 6 meters. That has an angular size of about 5 arc minutes or 5 sixtieths of 1 degree. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't see the bottom line. You can certainly see it. You just can't read the letters. What this really means is you could read 7 foot 6 inch tall letters from a distance of a mile or 75 foot tall letters from a distance of 10 miles. If we use the Rayleigh criterion for the human eye, the diffraction limit would be about 0.42 arc minutes. If you're an average person though, and this is tested data, you can resolve about 1.7 arc minutes. If you've got really good vision, maybe 0.7 arc minutes. Our vision is not diffraction limited. The diffraction limit is well less than half of our average tested ability to be able to resolve two objects or the top and the bottom of a building. Now let's look at a real world example and this is a good one. This is the city of Toronto. In the picture on the left you see the CN Tower which is 1800 feet tall and the Rogers Center, the building with the white roof to the left, which is 300 feet tall. The picture on the right was taken from 39 miles away. The angular size of the tower from that distance is half a degree. Half a degree is 30 arc minutes. That's about 60 times larger than the uh, Rayleigh diffraction limit and at least 15 times larger than what you can resolve with your naked eye. So a person with good vision can resolve 42 feet of the height of that tower from a distance of 39 miles. 400 feet are missing. This is not due to diffraction. This is due to the curvature of the earth. So folks, it's not perspective. It's not diffraction. It's curvature. It's curvature of this thing. Meanwhile, Quantum Eraser has come up with this observation. Hey, one quick one before you finish up, Nathan. I was doing something last night that you want to go because Timmy did mention something. He was talking about uh, Somley's Lake Pontchartrain, you know, the Causeway Bridge, right? right. Sure. You brought that up. Can you see my screen right here? Uh, no, but I'll bring it up for the audience. You've got your Google Earth, yeah? Yeah, This I was just messing around last night because I heard the Lake Pontchartrain uh, – argument and of course i have a whole spill on that argument that's ridiculous anyway but i i thought i'd just screw around on google earth right okay let's take a look here let's take a look here so this is the causeway is this the bridge soundly's bridge this yes. thing right here let me get closer is this the bridge let's see there's cars on it and stuff right is this the one he's talking about one of his observations yes Right, right. So he said that there was a curve, right? You could observe the curve. Is that what he said? Claiming you can detail the effects of atmospheric conditions and perspective as Earth curve, yes. No, he said it was curving. What I did, I said, okay, boy, if it's curving from one side to the other, then that means the elevation from one side to the other would be different, much different, correct? Oh, please tell me he's not going to do what I think he's going to do. Absolutely. There would be drop, correct? Yeah, that's what they claim. It's physically curving. Okay, let's go over here. This is the south side of the bridge, right? Can everyone see my little elevation thing down there? Maybe not. It's too small, right? 
Uh, it might not be on page actually. Just rearrange the. Uh, no, it doesn't show up on the screen share unless it's when you hover uh, your mouse. Does it show up when you move your mouse over? No. Yeah, it's over here. Yeah, it doesn't show. Well, let me just say this, and everyone can do this. I'm putting uh, the little hand over the base, you know, the ground where the bridge arrives, right here. It says five feet over here. Four feet, five feet, somewhere like that, right? So it's five feet. So guess what I'm going to do? Can anyone guess? Anyone guessing? Is anybody out there? No, everyone's silent. I'm going to put, and this is where the bridge stuff. starts on the north side, right? I'm going to put my little hand over here. Guess what the elevation is right here on the shore? Do you want me to get down there a little further? So basically, this is the shore on the other side. Guess what this elevation is? Four feet, five feet. Three feet. So let me ask you a question, uh, tickle me soundly. How in the world can this bridge be curving and have the same elevation on both sides? How can that happen? How can this side be three feet elevation and this side be four feet elevation, basically the same? How can that be? How can that be? Anyone on the panel? Uh, well, it's because the Earth is obviously undeservedly flat, John. Thank you. No further questions. Oh, no. You're kidding, right, Huey? I mean, Google Earth is based on a globe. You know that right all elevations are referenced to mean sea level I'm, I'm sure you know that that means every shoreline will show essentially a zero foot elevation at the water's edge i mean that's pretty much the definition of mean sea level try hovering over any of the oceans and you'll see a negative elevation that's the floor of the ocean measure the elevation next to the pontchartrain bridge and it's around negative 15 feet that's the depth of the lake what else would you expect to see on a globe model? Sea level is sea level, and it's the same all over the surface of that 8,000-mile diameter computer-generated sphere, which works perfectly, I might add. Do you seriously think sea level can be different at each end of a bridge? I mean, seriously? Uh, come on, man. Come on. All right, that's enough of that. Still got some questions. Anytime you guys feel like it, try to answer these for us. We would appreciate it. In the meantime, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.